Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining us today. My Bible right now is sitting open to the book of Leviticus in chapter 15. Leviticus 15. If you can, get your Bible and go there. And if you have one of those Bibles that has headings at the top that tell you what is coming, you may want to swallow hard and say, what in the world will Brother Mark do in in dealing with this passage? Will you hang with me, please? Get your Bible. Bible open to get something on which you can jot some notes, and we're going to carefully, very carefully deal with Leviticus chapter 15. In a week from this broadcast, it is Memorial Day, or what used to be called when I was a child, Decoration Day. It's a day for us to honor the graves of those who died in military service, and frankly, it's a day for us to honor people presently serving or who have served in the military. And if you want to use Memorial Day as a very special day to hand out the gospel to military personnel, past and present, We have three tracks that really will be helpful to you. At the end of this program, my announcer is going to be giving to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. The best way to do that if you want these particular tracks is to call us so that we have the time to ship these tracks to you. The three tracks are these. One is called A Good Soldier But Lost. A Good Soldier But Lost, based upon the testimony of Cornelius out of the book of Acts in chapter 10. A second tract is entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. It's a testimony of a young man named James Dunkley who died in Iraq serving our country but had a powerful testimony for Christ. A third track is this one simply entitled Memorial Stones. Memorial Stones. Friend, these tracks would be a mighty and powerful way by which you can communicate the gospel to people presently serving or have served in the past in military uh, service of our country as a way to say thank you, but a way to give them the gospel. Please, if you're looking for an opportunity to extend the gospel witness here, this one is for you. Get these tracks from us. Be ready when my announcer makes that phone number known, or you can just go to our website. Our web address is simply Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, some years ago, a pastor told me how uh, one of his deacons had verbally attacked another church member, and all the issues behind the, the situation are not relevant, but what is relevant is that a key church leader had said some very, very unkind words to another person. These words were a personal attack and did not help solve the problem between the two people. And many of the church folk had heard all that was said. Well, that night during the evening service, communion was supposed to take place. The pastor began by sharing the biblical guidelines for communion. Then the deacons were called forward to the table to prepare to serve the elements of communion. But first, there was this deacon He stood and publicly apologized in a very clear manner. He asked forgiveness of every person. At that point, the person he had attacked stood and accepted the apology in some very tender words. And actually, these two people had already dealt with this matter privately. But at that point, the deacon left the communion table and went to sit with his wife and did not serve communion that night. And the pastor, in explaining this, made reference to Leviticus 15. What in the world did the pastor find there to apply to a present-day local church matter? Well, get your Bible, get something to write on, let's find out. 
If your Bible's open there, Leviticus chapter 15, verses 1 and 2 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man have a running issue out of his flesh because of his issue, he is unclean. Go to the last two verses. Verses 32 and 33 say this, This is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith, and of her that is sick of her flowers, and of him that hath an issue, of the man and of the woman, and of him that lieth with her, that is unclean. We're going to stop reading right there, obviously. If there ever was a portion of scripture I'd rather skip over and not deal with, it's Leviticus 15. But we don't skip the hard sections here as we go through books of the Bible. There are three words in chapter 15 that appear a lot. The the three words are this, the word issue. Now, by the word issue, we're referring to a discharge, a bodily discharge. That word is used 24 times. Another word is the word unclean or uncleanness. It's used 33 times. And the other word is the word bathe or washing in water. It's used 11 times. Now, frankly, it's used more than 11 times, but it's used 11 times in reference to a person who is unclean and the process of them becoming clean. If you're looking for a usable outline to help walk through Leviticus 15, I suggest using three words, all beginning with the letter D, like in the word dog. The three words are this, defined, described, and details. Defined, described, and details. And here is how those words are used to help us walk through the chapter. The word defined here refers to the fact that throughout chapter 15, we are given definitions of bodily discharges that make a person unclean. And by unclean here, I'm referring to being unfit physically to go to the tabernacle and worship. The word described, I use it because here, the types of uncleanness, bodily uncleanness are described, and the consequences of being unclean are all laid out and described here. My last word is the word details. This chapter also gives the details on how a person who was unclean was to be made clean and fit for worship. You do know the old saying which says that hindsight is always twenty twenty. It simply means that well after a situation is over, we can see it far more clearly. But at the moment we are having to deal with a problem, we don't have twenty twenty vision. We can't usually we can't see all that really needs to be seen to deal with it. All we can do is follow basic principles that we know to be valuable and useful. You and I know about things that we call germs and microorganisms. We know about those. And you and I have tools today that allow us to see these things. But back in Moses' day, these organisms were unknown to men, but they were known to God. God was trying to protect his chosen nation from things potentially contagious. He even seems to, at times, go overboard to protect the people from germs and things that would just make them sick. Now, while the people could not know all that God knew, they were still called on to obey him. I think here's lesson number one from chapter 15. Obeying God, even when we don't understand his ways, is a practice that God's people in every era need to follow. I think I need to say that again. Obeying God, even when we don't understand his ways, is a practice that God's people in every era need to be following because it protects us in things that we don't at the moment in time, fully understand. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two is this. Well, actually, 
The lesson is shared more succinctly by Jesus in words that came right out of his mouth. These words are found in Mark chapter 7, verses 20 to 23. I've got them in front of me here. Listen, Mark 7, 20 to 23 says this. Jesus is talking. He said, that which cometh out of a man, that defileth a man for or because from within that is out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man, end quote. That's what Jesus said. Here in this chapter, Leviticus 15, these bodily discharges here certainly picture the list of sins given by Jesus in Mark 7. You remember that story I began with about that deacon? Well, out of his heart, not just out of his mouth, but out of his heart came those attacking words. The deacon was spiritually unclean. The unclean uh, people in Leviticus 15 were unclean for all the rest of the day, even after they had washed. Well, the pastor had that deacon sit and not serve for the rest of the Sunday. Oh, the deacon had made things right with both God and men, but to demonstrate how the sins of the heart hurt worship, the pastor had him step aside for the rest of that Sunday. That pastor reported that on that particular communion service, as a result of what had happened, there was a deep and lasting impact on the local church. The believers that were sitting there asked if they could sing some hymns before they took communion to give them time to first go and make things right and seek forgiveness of one another. Some of the members actually got up, went out, and began to make phone calls to even some unsaved people asking for forgiveness. That evening, the sinfulness of sin in the life of born-again people took on a very real meaning in the lives of that local church. Tell me, believer friend, tell me, are you, am I, are we harboring sin? Are we allowing some sin in our lives that you and I feel, well, it's just not all that important. We don't have to deal with it. Perhaps we... Well, we call it our pet sin. Oh, we would never use that word, but we really view it as our pet sin. And God, we think, will allow us to have this pet sin, and we forgot the sinfulness of sin. If you and I are doing such a thing, then you or I are unclean. We need to be washed. We're washed through the word of God. We're washed through the cleansing power of the once for all sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. We're washed as we come and with a contrite, broken heart, seek forgiveness of God and seek forgiveness of those whom we've hurt. Today, perhaps, today you need to see yourself. Do I need to see myself as a contagious person that needs to set aside and not serve because we're allowing sin to rule and reign in our life. This is a serious matter for the people of God in any era. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.